Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about, yeah, Debian 13 Trixie. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hatched, it's installed, and it's been tested. And so today we're going to talk about what I found out about it. So, yeah, why don't you uh, pull up a chair and uh, let's get started. So I guess the, you know, the first kind of thing is, is that Debian 13 is being planned to release sometime today. This is August the 9th, uh, 2025. And if not, I will hold this video until it is, uh, because that's always dependent upon what happens with their latest uh, release candidate, which is currently number, it's currently three, uh, which they think will be the final one before the release of uh, Debian 13. But you never know, there might be some bugs that they find and they hold it for a while. But Debian will be 32 years old this August, uh, about a little bit uh, further down in the August tree. But uh, yeah, it's been around a long time. Uh, it was established by Ian Murdoch back in August of 1993. Uh, the first uh, stable release uh, occurred on June the uh, 17th, 1996, and they they have been releasing every about every two years uh, ever since. The they use the their code names like Trixie come from the characters uh, from the movies Toy Story. So there are three branches of of Debian. These come from the website. These aren't mine. Uh, this is uh, the way Debian looks at them. So they have first is the stable, which is the current re, uh, supported release. Testing is where we are right now with Trixie. That is a preview or a testing branch of uh, Debian. And it right now it's in full lockdown, which means that uh, they aren't accepting new packages to be added to testing until the completion uh, of the release of Trixie. Unstable is also, or a rolling release called SID. Uh, that is bleeding edge. Packages are placed there by developers before Debian has done a whole lot of testing with it. They do some testing with it, but it isn't thorough. And so it's you basically, you use it at your own risk. There are a number of derivatives and flavors, which uh, Debian calls pure blends. The Debian Census Project has been, it used to count the number of derivatives and keep track of all of that. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, if it were still around, I think it would find about 141 distributions that are based on Debian in 2025. Uh, this is my best guess <laughs> based on what I have seen. Pure blends, which are a subset of Debian releases, these are configured for users with particular needs, uh, and we'll look at some of them. So some of the pure blends are Debian Junior. These are, this is a computing environment for children. It's, they're geared to, for education. Uh, there's also Debian EDU or Skull Linux. Uh, this is a school-ready network and tools for teachers as well as students. Debian Med is the medical and biometrics uh, software uh, for healthcare professionals and researchers. There's Debian Science, which contains a number of scientific tools for physics, chemistry, biology, and engineering even. Uh, there's Debian GIS, which is the uh, geospatial tools for geographic analysis. There's Debian Astro, which is for astronomy. It contains tools for telescope control, star charts, and, and astrophysics. There's Debian Multimedia, which is for audio and video or graphics tools for creative professionals. Debian Accessibility is a, uh, a pure blend for, that offers assistive technologies for those users with disabilities. Uh, Debian Ham Radio is a software suite for amateur radio enthusiasts. And there's also Debian Games. Debian EasyGo is an educational desktop that's geared for East Asian learning environments. Uh, and then there's Freedom Box, which is providing a private, secure home server for non-technical users. 
the architectures in which uh, uh, Debian supports is, these are fully supported now. This is 64-bit AMD 64, 64-bit ARM 64, ARM EABI or ARM EL, ARM version 7 or EABI, hard float ABI, so this is ARM HF, 64-bit uh, Little Indian PowerPC, 64-bit Little Indian Risk v and IBM Z390X. If you've looked at any of these videos I've done in the past, you'll notice there that there's missing a 32-bit uh, release that's fully supported. There is a partial 32-bit release for those people that still want to run 32-bit applications but there is no longer uh, full support for 32-bit. Uh, the minimum requirements for Debian 13, if you don't have a desktop installed, Pentium 4, 1 gigahertz uh, type of CPU or, or better. Required memory, about 512 megabytes. Recommended, a gig. Uh, disk space, about 4 gig for that. If you do have a desktop environment, they recommend at least a dual core 64-bit AMD 64 or ARM. One gigabyte of memory, two gigabyte is recommended. 10 gigabyte of disk space or more and 1076, no, 1024 by 768 screen resolutions. But if you, the recommended is a little bit different. Now, Trixie uh, takes a bit more memory than Debian 12 did. So, yeah, if you're coming from Debian 12, just plan on adding about an extra gig of memory for Trixie. Uh, it, they, Debian recommends uh, quad-core 64-bit CPUs, 4 gig of memory or more, 10 gig of disk space or more, and then 1024 by 768. Uh, the kernel uh, is 612 in this version of Trixie. Uh, that was released on November the 17th of 2024. There's some interesting things with long-term support. The Linux development team has shortened uh, the support intervals for what they call long-term support. So 612 is currently uh, slated to reach end of life on December of 2026. That's December of next year. So I'm not I'm not sure what Debian intends to do here. I would assume that they probably would bump the kernel. Or uh, in the past, when they've supported their systems, they have gone ahead and and maintained the kernel themselves. So uh, to put in the security patches or backports or uh, whatever they might need to do in order to make sure that it is patched up security wise. So I'm, I'm just not sure what they're intended to do. There isn't anything in the blog posts on Debian to explain that. And maybe if somebody from Debian sees this, maybe they'll add something down the road uh, to help us understand what the, what the plan is. Cause we don't know, but 612 introduced the uh, EEVDF scheduler for processes and if you're paying attention, you'll notice that EEVDF was replaced as the default scheduler uh, in the very next release of the kernel in 6.13. So again, so also um, uh, another thing that was added to 6.12 is the ability to do kernel patching uh, in 6.12. So it was introduced. Also, uh, RISC-V 64-bit support is standard. Uh, in 6.12. So there, there, of course, will be improvements, but it, the uh, RISC-V achieved the status of being a standard architecture that's supported by the kernel. They also support ARM permission overlay extensions, or POEs, uh, which is necessary to, uh, to implement Linux memory protection keys. There's a number of storage system improvements, like XFS updates, which supports larger block sizes uh, and allows those block sizes to even be larger than the standard page size. Eros FS uh, enhancements, that is the ability to mount file system images stored in files. There's also fuse updates, and those are ID map mounts now 
enable an easier layer of management for containerized storage. So this is uh, the changes that are actually in Debian 12. So uh, along with the kernel, uh, Debian is offering official support for RISC-V 64-bit. So not only do you have the kernel support, but you also have support in the package base as well. Uh, there's also improved hardening against ROP, COP, and JOP attacks. Those are malware attacks uh, that have been added to the kernel and so are also uh, supported by Debian 13. You can now HTT boot uh, uh, your system if you wish. It requires it to be in UEFI mode. But uh, yeah, it won't work on BIOS mode, but uh, it does work in HTT, uh, HTT boot does work in UEFI mode. Uh, curl and WCURL now supports HTTP3. Debian includes something like 14,000 new packages and contains nearly 70,000 packages uh, or more <laughs> as well. Some of the main updates for the, um, for the uh, desktop environments are GNOME 48 is supported, KDE Plasma is 6.3, uh, LXDE is 13, and LXQT is 2.1, XFCE is 4.20. Core applications are LibreOffice has been advanced to 25. Firefox is version 128.13, that, that'll be the extended release. Uh, you can, of course, install whatever versions of Firefox you want, but these are the ones that come standard in the package base. Uh, GIMP is 3.0, OpenJDK is 21, uh, P, uh, PHP is version 6.4, Python is now baselined at 3.13+, plus, and Samba is at 4.22. <laughs>
and we're back. <laughs> Welcome back. So uh, my, my final thoughts is uh, Debian has a nice release here. But Debian 13, I think, is a great release. I'm looking forward to see what DevOn uh, 6 or DevOn Excalibur. Uh, also, Tails is uh, Tails 7.0, which is based on this version of Debian, should be coming out officially, I think it's October. Yeah, I think there might be a release candidate of 7.0 out right now. And so they'll, they'll continue to do testing until... That's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the benchmarks and hope to see you in the next one. Like and subscribe and bye for now.